This man was on the list of the most wanted fugitives in Italy and directed a drug line between the Netherlands and Italy operating from Dubai. This mafia boss used encrypted phone messages to drive trucks carrying over 1,500 kilos of cocaine from Dutch warehouses to Italy. On the way back, the trucks then transported millions of euros in cash to the Netherlands. Who is this man? Before we continue with the video, we would like to ask you to subscribe to the channel. We see that more than 95% of our viewers are not subscribed to our channel. While well, this would help our channel a lot. So please hit that subscribe button. Okay, let's get back to the video. The man of this story is Rafael Imperiale. Born on October 24, 1974, Rafael is an Italian criminal and member of the Camorra. Rafael grew up in Castellamare di Stabia, just outside Naples. As the child of a wealthy businessman, he was once kidnapped, but managed to escape. How? That has always remained a mystery. In the 1990s, the Italian Rafael settled in Amsterdam, where he became the owner of the coffee shop Rockland. By his own admission, he does business with criminal Rick van der Bunt, who was shot dead in 2008. Rafael is a big player in the XTC trade and supplies weapons to the Neapolitan Mafia, the Camorra. He later turns to cocaine. In the Netherlands, Rafael sets up his organization. He lays focus on mixing the underworld and normal world. Rafael works with legal warehouses that house legal Dutch companies. In these warehouses, Rafael's organization substitutes cocaine for the deck cargo. Legal transport companies in the Netherlands are also part of his organization. According to the Italian court file, for example, there was a shipment of 80 kilos of cocaine that could be picked up at a transport company near Schiphol Airport near Amsterdam. Rafael's organization makes grateful use of the Netherlands, the transportation country and Europe's open borders. From the Netherlands, Rafael diverts to Spain, despite remaining active in the Netherlands. He becomes world news in 2016 when he helps return two paintings stolen from the Van Gogh Museum. It turns out Rafael bought the Van Goghs in 2002 to enforce a reduced sentence should he ever be caught. They were respectively view of the scene near Scheveningen and congregation leaving the Reformed Church at Nieuwenen. Two works of great art, historical value. The works were stolen on December 7, 2002 and were in very acceptable condition when they returned. Despite the fact that they had not been kept in optimal conditions during those 14 years, the frame had been removed and there were minor damages on the outer edges. It was an accomplice of Raphael who eventually led the police to the paintings. But Raphael himself is said to have had a hand in the deal. He wanted to show that he was willing to cooperate if it would benefit him. From Spain, Raphael moves on to Dubai, where he goes into hiding. Here he meets Ridwan Taghi. Together they cooperate in the drug trade, and even after Taghi's arrest, the two remain connected. Raphael reportedly spent 400,000 euros a month to maintain his luxurious lifestyle in Dubai. Raphael manages his own division, which deals primarily in narcotics trade. He also acts as a sparring partner for Taghi's son. Ridwan Taghi's eldest son, Faisal, can be classified as the second in command within Taghi's organization. Taghi Jr. reportedly wants to continue the criminal organization after his father's arrest. Rafael Imperiale is not just an advisor. By 2021, according to investigative agencies, Rafael is one of the world's top drug traffickers. From Dubai, he directs international shipments of thousands of kilograms of cocaine destined for the Italian mafia from Naples and Calabria, among others. An Italian witness even calls him Europe's number one. In Dubai, Rafael spent long periods of time at the world's only seven-star hotel, the Burj Al Arab. There, he built much of his cocaine empire. Rafael is said to have been part of a super cartel, consisting of Ridwan Taghi, top Irish criminal Daniel Kinahan, and Dutch-Bosnian gangster Eden Gakanin. 
Raphael directs his accomplices through the encrypted messaging service Sky ECC. They are so confident in the security of this network that they speak unflatteringly of hundreds of kilos of cocaine and tens of millions of euros. The big boss wants to be informed about every detail. Raphael's gang members even send photos from the Netherlands of how batches of cocaine are hidden. However, trusting Sky ECC turns out to be an expensive miscalculation. The Dutch and French police manage to crack the network and are able to read along live in February 2021, just as Raphael and Tagi Jr. are openly discussing a 2.5 million euro coke transport. Raphael says, Salam. How is it going? We will ask the other man to pay one million. Can you send another token to immediately pay the other 1.5 million? Four days later, several trucks carrying cash money drive into the Netherlands. An accomplice of Tagi's son collects the money. Faisal Tagi replies, he received the first million. Thank you. But how do criminals know for sure that they are delivering drugs or money to the right person? Well, to identify themselves to each other, they use tokens or unique numbers. They do this by sending a picture of the unique serial number of a bank bill by phone prior to a deal. Only the person in possession of the banknote may accept the drugs or money. In 2020 and 2021, Raphael has trucks carrying a total of 1,556 kilos of cocaine, driven to Italy from company warehouses in North Holland, all while he is in Dubai. On the way back, his drivers smuggled millions of euros in cash to the Netherlands. According to police, Raphael's men put batches of around 150 kilos of cocaine on transport every month from a woodworking company in Harlem. They have a truck come first to pick up a legal batch of goods, such as potatoes, lettuce, men's deodorant or frozen chicken legs. In the warehouse, Italian men remove some of the cargo from the truck. They empty the packaging and put back in plastic sealed packages of coke. Thus, it looks as if a truck is heading for Italy with legal cargo. Through the same route, such large batches of cash are returned sometimes unloaded with a forklift. Of those cash trips, 5 million euros are destined for Ridwan Taghi's 22-year-old son. Intercepted messages between Faisal Taghi and Rafael show, according to the Justice Department, that 2.5 million euros actually reached Taghi's son. The reason for the payment is not entirely clear. It is said to be a personal matter. What do you think that this personal matter entails? Let us know in the comments below. Dutch police do not appear to be conducting a large-scale investigation into Raphael's drug shipments. Instead, they are sending the intercepted Sky ECC messages to Italy via Europol. However, the Dutch police does decide to cut Raphael's cocaine line in March 2021. An arrest team intervenes as four men in the village of Krukuis are in the process of transferring a batch of 125 kilograms into a trunk. Police arrest four men, including the Italian driver of the shipment. A few months later, the curtain also falls for Raphael himself. For years, Dubai refused to extradite him to Italy, but in August 2021, the Dubai police raid his apartment. On the walls, the heavily armed officers see an artwork of drug boss Pablo Escobar and a map of Amsterdam, the city where he had lived for years since the 1990s. They find Raphael by the pool, dressed in swimming trunks and a blue shirt. He is taken away. Once extradited to Italy, Raphael agrees to a crown witness deal. In exchange for reduced sentences, he testifies against his former business partners. He operated at such a high level that criminals around the world must fear his confessions. Surprisingly, Raphael refused to testify in the criminal case against his alleged criminal business partner, Richard R., or better known as Rico the Chilean. Rico was sentenced in 2021 to 11 years in prison for leading criminal organizations with liquidations and money laundering as the goal. 
Meanwhile, his case is on appeal at the Amsterdam court. In this appeal, a request has been made to hear Raphael as a witness. During his stay in Dubai, Raphael also bought an island. Its value? Between 60 and 80 million euros. It is part of an artificial archipelago off the coast in Dubai. Anyone who sees the photos immediately understands the name, the world. The archipelago is shaped like a map of the world. And a fun detail, Raphael is said to own Taiwan. Raphael is trying to make a deal with the island in exchange for reduced sentences, just as he did with the two Van Goghs. The most important questions are, will he succeed in making a good deal for himself with the courts, or will other criminals put a stop to that? This was the story of Raphael Imperiale. If you've liked this video, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. We'll see you in the next one.